Hi, you are watching. The story begins deep inside a dark, damp cave. Loud screeches echoed off the walls as goblins celebrated the death of their chief. One goblin, clutching the former chief's weapon, declared himself the new leader. His eyes gleamed with a mix of triumph and madness as he brandished the stolen weapon, reveling in his newfound power. However, his partner had a different opinion. He believed that since he had done most of the work, he should be the chief, fueled by jealousy and anger. He lunged at his partner and bit down hard on his nose. The cave filled with the sounds of their struggle, the screeches growing louder. Other goblins gathered around, watching the fight with glee and placing bets on who would win. To them, this was an exciting pastime. Their simple minds found great entertainment in the chaos of battle. Yet amidst the excitement, there is something more that thrilled them than a fight, as they had remembered they still had a prey to satisfy their desires, and the previous chief had not yet laid hands on her, which made the goblins' eyes sparkled with anticipation. So they began murmuring amongst themselves, plotting to search for and claim her for themselves. But the others hesitated. The goblin guarding the prey had returned, and he was different from the rest. Unlike the others, who wore simple cloths to cover their nether regions, this one was draped in ragged clothes that covered most of his body. His appearance was intimidating, not just because of his attire but also because he stood out, covering himself like a human. Despite his intimidating presence, he was alone, with no chief to lead them. The goblins were simply following their base instincts, and their desire craves for flesh. And so they eyed the strange goblin intently, trying to discern his next move, suspecting that he knew where the prey was located. So it is smart to follow him closely and seize the prey when the opportunity arose. But some of the goblins suggested waiting a bit longer. As a few of their toughest members had already gone ahead to find the prey, they planned to let the oddball discover the prey first and engage in a fight, then take advantage of the chaos to kill him and the big guys, ultimately claiming the prey for themselves. But they didn't take into account that the oddball was eavesdropping on their conversation. His ears perked up, and instead of idling around and walking slowly, the odd goblin decided to bolt toward where the girl was held. His sudden sprint allowed him to lose the goblins who were following him, but he encountered another problem upon arriving at the location. As he had feared, the goblins were all up in arms, ready to violate her. Noticing his presence, the girl pleaded for help, her eyes wide with fear. But the biggest goblin of the group stepped forward to confront the odd goblin, as he refused to let anyone stop him from having his good time, especially with the chief already dead. And as the strongest goblin in the group, he felt entitled to claim the prey first. But the odd goblin didn't care about any of that. He was determined to protect the girl he had been guarding. Seeing his resolve, the big goblin and his minions decided to attack him all at once. Outnumbered, the odd goblin was quickly overpowered by the ferocity of their assault. Despite the odds, he knew he couldn't let this be the end. Watching for an opening, he seized the moment and didn't waste any time. He killed the biggest goblin of the bunch. The others froze in shock never expecting a goblin to wield a weapon as sharp and deadly as a human's. With this, fear immediately set in their minds. The sight of their leader felled so quickly and brutally made them realize they were outmatched. Panicked, the remaining goblins bolted from the place, but not without shouting threats. They promised to return with reinforcements to take him down. And now that the other goblins had fled, the odd goblin could finally catch his breath. He tried to collect himself, knowing that more battles were on the horizon. This was just the beginning of the hellish day that would soon unfold. As he took a moment to recover, the pink-haired woman named Kelia thanked him once more. This wasn't the first time he had saved her, nor would it be the last. She had come to realize that he was different from the other goblins, as he had never harmed her in any way. So she tries her best to be of help to him in any way she can. While it was true that a goblin would never protect a human, there was a deeper reason for his actions. The odd goblin was different because he had once been human too. A few days back, Lin Tian died in a gruesome accident, but he hadn't expected that instead of meeting God after being hit by a dump truck. He would be transported to another world with a system. Though he had a system, it still hadn't fully activated. Other than being able to see some stats, it didn't seem to have any other functions. Quite literally useless. Despite this, Lin Tian hadn't been idle these past few days. From what Kelia had told him, he had gained some understanding of this new world. This world, created by gods, was teeming with various powerful monsters and humans had carved out their place on this continent through sheer strength. Unfortunately, the goblin he reincarnated as was the weakest and filthiest monster in this world. Under such circumstances, his stats were incredibly low. Even among goblins, he could be easily killed, with an overall combat power of only 30. Luckily, his name hadn't changed. He was still Lin Tien, which provided a small comfort. But there was a way to get stronger in this place, and that was through mating with these girls. In this harsh reality, 
goblins had the ability to get stronger through constant mating and reproduction. However, they had no females of their own. So to reproduce, they could only mate with other female creatures. This was why goblins constantly plundered and abducted women. But Lin Tian had been human, and doing such things was completely against his beliefs. So that method of getting stronger was off the table. But with his beliefs, he found himself in a state of worry, as he was trying to think of other ways to increase his strength. He knew all too well that the other goblins would definitely return to attack them. But it seems like he was on a dead end. Noticing his worried expression, Kelia tried her best to lighten the mood. She assured him not to worry, saying that after spending these days together, she understood him better. She knew he was different from the other goblins and didn't really want to live among them. With a hopeful smile, she promised that when the Knight Order came to rescue her, she would tell them how he had saved her. And there is nothing to worry, as she believed that the Knight Order is always fair and just. They will definitely agree to let him live in the village. And with her optimism and the stories she shared about the Holy Knight Order gave Lin Tian hope. He believed her words, which spark optimism in himself as well. And so he started thinking that even if the system couldn't activate immediately, as long as he held out until the humans came to rescue them and gained their protection, he could survive. Then, he could slowly figure out how to fully activate his system. But things weren't going to be as easy as Lin Tian had hoped, as the screech of a goblin rushing towards them shattered the brief moment of peace. Without hesitation, he commanded Kelia to hide. She complied without question, disappearing into the shadows. Just as expected, a goblin appeared, but it seemed to be alone. Despite being alone, this goblin had the same desperate agenda. It rushed towards them with frantic energy, revealing that a human had appeared killing the others. And since it believed that strength was the only way to avoid death, the goblin frantically ran to find Kelia to get strong. But its reckless charge made it an easy target for Lin Tian. He swiftly killed the goblin on the spot. With the immediate threat neutralized, he quickly relayed the information, telling Kelia that the humans are here to rescue her. Immediately, Kelia's face lit up with delight. He assumed that it must be the Holy Order. So without wasting a moment, she moved to find them, her heart filled with hope and excitement. While Lin Tian watched as she darted off, a mix of relief and apprehension filling him. The arrival of the Holy Order could mean salvation for Kelia, and possibly a chance for him to prove his worth. But their progress was abruptly halted as they felt a massive aura being released. The intensity of the power made the cave rumble. It turns out, it emanated from a human who was effortlessly dealing with the goblins with just one strike, but he doesn't have to go that hard in dealing with goblins, so this individual just seemed to be letting off steam. His fury evident as he dispatched the filthy creatures that had dared to tear his Holy Order uniform. But Lin Tian stood there and watched in awe and disbelief. This level 25 warrior, named Loader, exuded an overwhelming presence. What shocked Lin Tian even more was when he used his appraisal skill on Loader and discovered his overall combat power was 400. It was the highest stat Lin Tian had seen since arriving in this world, making him question if Loader was really human. While Lin Tian stood frozen in place, marveling at how effortlessly humans dealt with the goblins, Kelia excitedly approached Commander Loader, thrilled to finally see another human. But Lin Tian quickly noticed that Loder was raising his sword to strike Kelia. With quick reflexes, he managed to push her out of the way just in time. Though it was rough, he managed to save Kelia from the deadly blow. Still, the sudden attack left Lin Tian baffled. Weren't these holy knights supposed to rescue people? So he wondered why they were attacking Kelia. It dawned on him that perhaps the darkness of the cave had caused Loder to mistake her for a goblin. It seemed that was the case, as Loder angrily referred to them as goblins and expressed his disdain that a goblin had managed to dodge his attack. With this, Kelia quickly tried to clear up the misunderstanding, explaining who she was, but Loder just told her to shut up, as he already knew it was her. But he believed that she had been defiled by goblins and might even be carrying a goblin spawn, so it was ridiculous for someone as filthy as her to expect mercy from him. It would be better for her to go repent her sins to the Great Holy Mother. Immediately, Kelia pleaded with him, insisting that although she had been captured, she hadn't been defiled by the goblins. She then pointed at Lin Tian, explaining that he had protected her. But unfortunately, Loder was a close-minded person. He didn't believe anything she said. And the idea that a goblin had saved her and was not hostile towards humans was beyond his comprehension. He even felt insulted, thinking Kelia was taking him for a fool. So he raised his sword to strike once more, and just advised her to make her stories more believable if she was going to lie. And Lin Tian couldn't believe what he was witnessing. He hadn't expected things to go south so quickly. With no other choice, he stepped in without hesitation, shoving Kelia to the side and confronting Loder himself. He hoped to buy enough time for Kelia to escape. Unexpectedly, before Loder's sword could reach him, a magical glow appeared out of thin air, protecting Lin Tian from the attack. 
this powerful magic came from a woman draped in white, her aura exuding holiness and commanding authority. She wore a veil, and her presence immediately halted Loder as she asked him to wait, expressing her interest in this strange goblin. Commander Loder stepped aside, revealing that this woman was none other than the Holy Maiden, Ifreya. Seizing the opportunity, Kelia crawled over and called out to the Holy Maiden, begging her to save them. Ifreya helped Kelia up and handed her over to the very man who had been trying to kill her moments ago. Then she turned her attention to Lin Tian and asked if he could understand her words. Lin Tian was struck by the gravity of the situation. He realized that Ifreya, the Holy Maiden and spokesperson of the temple, might be his only hope of leaving this place alive. So he snapped out of his shock and quickly responded that he can understand her. He took a deep breath and continued to reveal that he is not a monster of this world, as he used to be human, but he became like this because of an accident, but he can explain everything if she takes him with her. Ifreya's eyes narrowed slightly, as this was such an unexpected event. Goblins were usually stupid and lowly creatures. They couldn't speak or think fluently. Yet, this goblin could talk. Although he blabbers about stories they don't understand, it does seem smarter than those goblins. This rarity made them wonder if he might be a gift from the Holy Mother. And so the Holy Maiden Ifreya turned to Kelia and asked for confirmation if this goblin really did not hurt her. To which Kelia gladly confirmed, and not only did he not hurt her, but he also protected her from other goblins and gave her food. This was enough of a confirmation for Ifreya, and as she recognized the goblin's uniqueness, she decided to take the goblin back first and study it thoroughly before making any decisions, which delighted Kelia, as she had fulfilled her promise to the goblin. Ifreya then turned toward Lin Tian and asked if he was willing to join them, and knowing that staying meant certain death, he immediately answered that he is willing. And with a flick of her fingers, Ifreya quickly broke the barrier that held Lin Tian. Then she ordered everyone to prepare to leave. Finally, things seemed to be looking up for Lin Tian, as he was now with a person who could listen to reason, and he felt a sense of security about his future, which he was grateful for. So he immediately approached Ifreya to express his thanks, promising that he would repay her properly. But as he looked more closely at her complexion, he noticed a wicked smile that caught him off guard, and the next thing he heard was a sound he was all too familiar with. The sickening noise of metal piercing flesh. Instantly, he knew what had happened but was still in denial. When he turned around, his worst fears were confirmed. Kelia had been killed without a second thought, her once lively body now lying lifeless and cold on the ground. Lin Tian was stunned, unable to move. The shock was too overwhelming. Just when he thought things were getting better, it turned out to be a cruel lie. He stood there, frozen, trying to convince himself that this was a nightmare, a cruel trick of his mind. But the voice of the woman, who he had thought was their holy savior, shattered any remaining hope. Her wicked laughter echoed in the cave, as she mocked the goblin, telling him that when they get back, he better repay her well, revealing her true nature to be a sadistic monster who took pleasure in his helpless reaction. And Lin Tian was indeed helpless, shaken to his core as his fragile reality crumbled before his eyes. And one week had passed. In the middle of the village, the bell rang loudly, summoning everyone to gather. The villagers knew that the influential people from the temple had something important to announce. As they assembled, tension filled the air, and a sense of anticipation gripped the crowd. An official from the temple stepped forward and addressed the villagers, rallying them with alarming news. That this goblin raid has brought great harm to Bright Town. The goblins used despicable sneak attacks to slaughter 30 residents of their village. And this intensified the villagers' emotions their grief and anger palpable. But it was a reasonable reaction, given the loss of so many lives to these foul creatures. But what wasn't natural was the way the temple was using these emotions to further their own agenda. And the official continued, praising the temple's actions. For the holy order on behalf of the temple had purged these goblins and avenged the harmed villagers. After that, the holy maiden Ephraia stepped forward, her presence commanding attention. She spoke with a calm yet authoritative voice telling everyone to continue to pray devoutly to the temple, for the temple will always protect her devout followers. And her words instantly convinced everyone in the village. Even those who had been skeptical before now found themselves praising the holy temple. The villagers' faith was reignited, and they looked to the temple with newfound devotion and trust. A few moments later, the holy maiden Ephraia returned to her quarters, celebrating the success of the sermon. Not that it was a surprise, as these villagers were as foolish as ever. Now they would pray even more devoutly to the temple and offer more tributes. Her celebration was abruptly interrupted by someone calling her out, turning towards the voice. It was the same goblin from before. Lin Tian had just regained consciousness, and it looked like he had gone through hell. Gruesome scars covered his body, and one of his eyes had been gouged out. Despite his injuries, there was a fierce rage in his eyes as he called Ifreya a bitch over and over again. 
But Ephraya paid no mind to his words. Instead, a twisted smile played on her lips as she marveled at how resilient he was, with such strong vitality. It was no wonder the temple can't eradicate goblins from the continent. But now that Lin Tian had regained consciousness, Ephraya was excited to see how poison would affect goblins this time. This made Lin Tian grit his teeth. It was the same thing over and over. This wasn't for research. It was just her wicked way to satisfy her sadistic nature. With built-up anger, he couldn't control himself and lashed out at Ephraya once more, accusing her of deceiving him, deceiving everyone, and killing Kelia. He then questioned if this was truly the holy order that Ephraya was so proud of, if this was her idea of human justice, because if it was, then they were no different from the goblins they despised. But his defiance was swiftly met with brutality. Ephraya silenced him by forcefully plunging a stick into his mouth, and now that he was silenced, she sneered, questioning how a weak and trashy creature like him, a lustful goblin, could dare to question human justice, and that Kelly Abit was bewitched by him and dared to speak for him. That's a betrayal of humanity and the Holy Order. So her death was her final loyalty. And goblins are nothing more than vermin on this continent. And for the Holy Maiden to speak to him is a great favor. So he should be grateful and use his small, disgusting body to contribute to human and Holy Order experiments. And with that, the torture continued. He helplessly endured it all. The agony relentless and unending. Even when he slipped into unconsciousness, he was swiftly awakened by the next wave of pain. Through the torment, Lin Tian questioned if he was really going to die here, so unwilling and helpless. But there was no one he could blame but himself. It was all his fault. He had been too foolish, reincarnated from a human to a low-level goblin. He had naively held on to human compassion, thinking they were righteous and kind. Weakness and naivety were his deadliest mistakes. After being taken back to the human village, Loder and Ephraya had tortured and toyed with him in every possible way. Never believing a word he said, they took sadistic pleasure in his suffering. He didn't last long, eventually being toyed to death by a sadistic woman. The only wish that held him to his grave was that if he could do it again, he would never trust humans. If he could do it again, he would grind their bones and drain their blood. But that was only if he could live again. As his consciousness faded, rather than drifting into an endless void, Lin Tian woke up in a different place. A place where stars could be seen for miles. This was impossible. So he checked his body and saw that it was intact, void of any damage. Yet something felt different. He felt caught between death and life, making him wonder where this place was. But he didn't have to wait long for answers, as a system window popped up in front of his very eyes, notifying him that the Goblin Life Simulation System has been activated. Then it reported that he was actually dead and gave him a recap of his life, and that the pain of the week's torture was imprinted on his soul. He would never forget the pain humans brought him. His end had been one of the worst fates for any transmigrator, and therefore the system can allow him to restart and open a new life. This was a shock to him, as the personal system, which had been useless from the start, had activated only after his death. And if his understanding was correct, this system could bring him back to life. But it seemed he would be reborn once again as the lowest creature, a goblin. And Lin Tian's mind raced. The idea of returning as a goblin, the weakest and most despised of creatures, filled him with dread. But just to make sure, Lin Tian asked the system about what the yes and no options represent. And the system promptly reported to him that if he chooses no, his soul will dissipate and die completely. And if he chooses yes, he will retain his current memory and system and be sent back to the goblin cave a week ago. And the thought of retaining his memory and going back a week had the most impact on him, instantly bringing a smile to his face. This was a chance for revenge. He will make Loder and Afreya pay for what they had done to him and Kelia. So without a moment's hesitation, he chose the yes option with a determined smile on his face. And as soon as he made his choice, a surge of life force began to transfer into him, initiating the Goblin Life 2.0. But this time there was a different glint in his eye, the eyes of a being with nothing but revenge driving him. And just when he thought things couldn't get better, the system added an additional surprise, because this is now Goblin Life 2.0. It was inclined to help him survive a bit longer, so the system has slightly strengthened him, which made him smirk, as it was indeed just a little bit. But he wouldn't complain, as it was better than nothing. And with that, he was back in his previous body. But before he could start moving, the system popped up once more, warning him that although he had been reborn, the danger was not over. The human holy order was about to reach him, and if he died again, the system would not be able to revive him. But this didn't shock him, as it was to be expected. Reincarnating once was already a miracle. Now, he was on high alert. With the order about to arrive, he couldn't afford to let his guard down. He immediately asked the system what it could do, prompting it to explain that it was called the Goblin Life Simulation System. 
the host could simulate his life with the system to foresee future events. Every choice he made would lead to different outcomes, and each simulation required 24 hours after it ended. He would earn points from each simulation, which could be exchanged for items. This made him grin, as he realized that it meant he could see the future. Such an overpowered system indeed, and it would be a crime not to use it to its full potential. So, he immediately started the life simulation. The system prompted, displaying the current scenario, escape the goblin cave. The goblin cave he was in had been discovered by the Holy Knight Loader. To escape from Holy Knight Loader, he needed to make a critical choice. First option was to warn his fellow goblins and unite to face Loader and his men with a reward of 10 points, or abandon the other goblins and escape with a reward of 5 points, or hide in the cave and pray Loader and his men don't find him, which would give him 0 points. Although there were 3 options, he was sure that even if all the goblins in the cave united, they couldn't match Loader alone. Only escaping could save him. With this realization, he decided to simulate it first and choose the option with the highest score, knowing that if he could exchange for a weapon, his chance of defeating his enemies with a sneak attack rises. Just as he expected, relying on the goblins here was impossible for survival, even when he led the goblins in a desperate battle against Holy Knight Loader. The vast difference in strength meant they were still slain by Loader and his men. However, he earned the points he needed, so he immediately opened the exchange shop. To his surprise, there were so many weapons to choose from, ranging from short blades to long swords, and every weapon he could think of. There was even an option to buy a gun, and it looks powerful. But alas, his points were too low. Thankfully, there was still a weapon that cost exactly 10 points. It was an elven lightweight swift blade. This small dagger crafted by elves gave the user a 10% speed boost and 15 strength increase. Though fragile, it was incredibly sharp. Without hesitation, he bought it. As soon as the blade materialized in his hand, he felt his stats significantly boosted. It was worlds apart from the typical goblin weapons. He was sure that if he hit a vital spot with it, it could be a one-hit kill. But that was enough of daydreaming for today, as he realized that he hadn't seen Kelia anywhere. So he asked the system where she had gone. The system answered that due to the host's rebirth, some timeline details had changed. In this timeline, Kelia was not captured by goblins and continued to live happily in the village. This was a surprise, but a welcome one, as it looked like he had fulfilled his promise to Kelia after all and he was thankful for the unexpected turn of events. And in that case, he had no more concerns. With his mind now clear, he focused on what lay ahead, revenge. But first, he had to escape and survive. He immediately headed towards the exit. He knew the narrowest passage would be his best bet. The entrance outside was smaller, meaning the guards would be relatively weaker. With this in mind, he moved swiftly and silently, and Lin Tian made his way through the cave. His senses were heightened, and just as he expected, as Lin Tian got close to the exit, he could already hear someone outside. From their attire, it seemed like they were Knights of the Holy Order, and quickly he hid in the shadows and eavesdropped to gather more information. Thankfully, with nothing to do, the Knights easily got bored and started chatting. And just as Lin Tian had thought, this Knight expected that any goblin that runs out from this small entrance is trash, and so they believed that they can crush it with one hammer. But hunting goblins wasn't their only priority, because as Lord Loder ordered, any girl who tries to escape in the chaos must be killed, and they definitely can't let this reach the village, so they would also dispose the body instantly and kill any witness. This chatter cemented Lin Tian's belief that everyone in that damned holy order was rotten. For their rule, they even killed innocent people of their own kind, let alone a goblin like him. He had no choice but to fight. With this resolve, he pinched his nose and tried his best to mimic a woman's voice in distress, calling for help. This instantly lured in one of the knights, who was thinking of the reward Lord Loder would give for killing a straggler. He approached the cave entrance with a two-faced smile. As he got close, the knight then called out, reassuring the supposed woman not to be afraid, and claimed he was there to take her back. But instead of finding a woman, the knight was met with a dagger plunging deep into his brain, killing him instantly. With this, Lintian made his first kill. One of the remaining hunters noticed his buddy wasn't moving, wondering why it was taking so long for him to return. Maybe he was bugging out so he decided to approach and check. But as he got close, Lin Tian suddenly appeared from the shadows, and the man tried to ready himself for a fight but was too caught off guard. And therefore, Lin Tian easily pushed his weak ass, and Lin Tian was on demon time right now. Even when the guy was mid-fall, he was already up there ready to slit this bitch to the afterlife. But the man's armor saved him from a fatal blow. Nonetheless, his armor couldn't compensate his lack of skill, and so he just hit the ground hard and lay there sweating bullets as he realized he was face to face with death. But since this boy was desperate, he began begging for his life. While kneeling in front of another guy, 
crying his eyes out and show pictures of his family, thinking that since this goblin could speak human language, he might have human empathy. While Lin Tian was standing over him, finding the man's actions pitiful, just because he understood human language didn't mean he had human empathy, especially after he'd killed the man's buddy without blinking. Still he let this boy talk, as he was curious where this would go. And so the guy continued to plead, explaining that he was just following orders, forced even. He never wanted to go to this place to begin with. To show his sincerity, he told the goblin he would reach into his pack and offer him his gold coins, and if that wasn't enough, he promised to bring fresh juicy human girls after this. But this just angered Lin Tian even more, and he now regretted letting the man talk for so long, as the offer of trafficking humans disgusted him, especially knowing the man had his own daughter. And so as soon as the guy tried to show him the London special technique, he didn't hesitate to demonstrate his own form of ruthless justice, separating the man's head from his body. And with his head roll on the floor, and pendant on the ground, he felt sorry for the man's family, but understood that sometimes weeds need to be pulled out before they can spread. Some evils are best eradicated swiftly and thoroughly. But his attention was then diverted by a voice coming from the forest. It was unmistakably loaders, and they were checking up on the guards. Without further delay, Lin Tian undressed the guard, donned his clothes, and slipped away, vowing to see Loder and Ephraya soon. A few moments later, Loder and Ephraya arrived at the scene, confused about what had happened to their stationed guards. The cut was clean and swift. This couldn't have been the work of a normal goblin. Ephraya suggested that a goblin capable of killing both guards must be a mutant, and letting it escape was not a good sign, which pissed Loder off even more. As he kicked one of the corpses in frustration, furious that these guards couldn't handle a mutated goblin. While Ephraya, on the other hand, licked her lips. Her sadistic excitement barely contained, as the thought of getting her hands on such a unique specimen for her experiments thrilled her to no end. A few moments later, nightfall arrived. The moon illuminated the forest, casting an eerie glow, while we see Lintian gasping for air, as he was relieved to have survived. He had been running endlessly until he was exhausted, but he couldn't afford to let his guard down now so he tries to recover as quickly as possible to continue his journey. As he eat, though, his thoughts turn to the Holy Knights, and since they hated goblins so much, he resolved to deal with them in the same brutal manner goblins did. Goblins could upgrade their characteristics through mating and devouring, improving their own values, and cultivating stronger future generations. Lin Tian's mind was filled with vengeance, and in this life, he wanted every man to live with his only extravagant wish being death. Let every woman moan and wail under his feet especially that damn loader in Ephraya. But his train of thought was quickly shattered as he noticed the rustling of the bushes. And with him on edge, he immediately assumed it was one of Loder's minions still hunting him. So without hesitation, he stood up and rushed in for a surprise attack, startling the figure in the bush. With this, the other party tripped over a stone, which fortunately made it easy for Lin Tian to see who she was. And she was a goblin, and a talking one at that. But with his momentum already in check, he couldn't do anything but stumble with her landing awkwardly on top, and the next thing he saw was a clear view of her and her voluptuous body, an unexpected sight for him. But he didn't care about that, as his mind was filled with questions, wondering why on earth was there a female goblin appearing now, as he had always understood that goblins were only male, reproducing by mating with other creatures. But her presence challenged that belief. But with his eyes darting around in confusion, the female goblin assumed he was about to do something bad, and so she quickly sat up and begged him not to hurt her explaining that she was just fetching water. But this made him think even more, wondering how could this goblin speak in complete sentences just like him. To find answers, he opted to use his appraisal skill on her. While her level is nothing to not with, her general information revealed surprising titles, such as a fallen god, pure soul, and god's blessing. But what shocked him even more was a hidden characteristic, stating that if a male goblin united with her, he would become the legendary goblin god. The realization struck him like a bolt of lightning. This female goblin held immense power and potential, something he never imagined could exist. And now that she was here, trembling before him, unaware of the extraordinary destiny she carried, as he could immediately ascend to godhood if he could mate with her. But that is only if he could mate with her. But with his growing intent look, it only made the goblin girl more uncomfortable, leading her to assume he didn't believe her story. So she shakily tried to convince him again that she was truly called by the goblin leader to fetch water. If she couldn't do that, she would be beaten to death by the clan leader. And her expression said it all, so he immediately apologized, explaining that it wasn't his intention to scare her. To show his sincerity, he patted her back and, with a calm voice, reassured her that it was fine. But he wasn't entirely doing this out of compassion. He just didn't want her to cry anymore. 
as it might attract Loder's minions. But this surprised the girl as she realized he could talk as well. Her eyes gleamed with excitement, which made Lin Tian laugh at how cute she was. But this was reasonable, as goblins generally couldn't speak, and she probably rarely talked to other tribesmen. Finding someone like him must have felt like a godsend to her. However, his train of thought was disrupted once more as he noticed the goblin girl clinging to his cloak. She did this because she felt safe with him, as this was the first time she had encountered such a kind goblin. Other goblins would only beat and scold her. It was the first time someone was taking care of her so carefully. With this, she suggested that if he had nowhere to go, he could come back with her instead. This surprised Lin Tian, and her words meant he was almost near the first base to becoming a goblin god. Immediately, he expressed his interest in joining her. Even though he wasn't sure if Loder and the others had caught up, getting with her was the top priority. But mating here wasn't an option either, as he couldn't risk Loder's men finding him with his pants down, balls deep inside a goblin. So he set his priority to find a place to stay first, which was what the goblin girl had suggested. Meanwhile, the goblin girl on the other hand, was blushing as she noticed how strong his arm felt pressing down on her shoulder. And so she immediately looked at Lin Tian and agreed to take him to her village. With this, his eyes lit up, and a grin dawned upon him. It was like killing two birds with one stone, as he wouldn't have to worry about where to recruit his subordinates anymore while also becoming the goblin god in the process. Not long after, they arrived at the goblin camp, and as expected, the new face put everyone on high alert. And not only was he new, but he was also wearing clothes like humans do, which the goblins had never seen before, and therefore think that he was a freak show, making them even more on edge. But despite the threat, Lin Tian could only think about how impressive the numbers of goblins in this tribe were, which convinced him even more that this was the best place to start expanding his power. And so with a composed demeanor, he explained to the goblins that he wanted to meet their boss as he was here to join them. But this just agitated them, because to them, an outsider thinking he could see the boss whenever he wanted was disrespectful. So instead of complying, they were now thinking of killing him and sending him to see the boss right after that. But the girl couldn't allow such a thing to happen. So she immediately got between them, trying to convince them not to do anything to him, assuring them he wasn't a bad goblin at all. But the commotion garnered the boss's attention, which surprised Lin Tian after seeing him, as the boss carried a staff adorned with human bones, and his appearance was entirely different from the goblins Lin Tian had seen before, different from the previous goblin chief he had been under. Not only that, his level was not to be trifled with either, as it matched that of Loder, and his title was somewhat concerning, as he got that breeding machine title coupled with a divine blessing, and he also had an overall battle power of 200, which made Lin Tian more alert, but he couldn't back down now, so he pressed on with his plan, determined to make this village his own. Immediately, the goblin chief demanded to know why Yue had brought an outsider back with her, to which she explained that he had nowhere else to go, hoping to appeal to the chief's sense of empathy. But the chieftain, being a territorial brute, quickly misinterpreted her gesture. In his mind she had brought the outsider as their next meal. So without hesitation, the chieftain ordered his men to attack, and their faces lighting up with the anticipation of a midnight snack. So it seems like a fight was inevitable, but Lin Tian was quick with it. Instead of preparing for battle, he swiftly pulled out his dagger, not as a weapon but as a bargaining chip. In a calm yet firm voice, he declared that he could make weapons. So if the goblins were smart, they would let him join their ranks, as he could make them stronger. And quickly, the chieftain halted his men and approached Lin Tian, scrutinizing him closely even sniffing to see if he could detect any deceit. To his surprise, Lin Tian seemed genuine, which piqued his interest. So he demanded to know what kind of weapons Lin Tian could make. With this, Lin Tian sensed he was already halfway to convince the chieftain, so he confidently boasted about his skills, assuring the chieftain that as long as they found iron ore, he could forge any iron weapons, and given some time, he could create even better weapons than the ones they currently had, and he knew his boasting would work on this chief, who unlike most goblins, could speak in complete sentences, indicating a higher level of intelligence and making him more receptive to reason. And judging from their looks, the goblins were visibly astonished by the dagger he showed them and the promises he made. And so he seized the moment, emphasizing that with iron tools, they could defeat monsters or humans they encountered. And this last bit sealed the deal. And now they are convinced of Lin Tian's craftsmanship. So the goblins were now excited about the possibilities. With Lin Tian's skills, they will no longer fear the humans and even dreamed of bigger conquests. Some goblins even fantasized about capturing elves, confident that with iron weapons in their arsenal, nothing could stop them from achieving their dreams. And the energy in the air was electric. The goblins were too excited at the prospect of new weapons. Even the chieftain couldn't hide it. But he knew better than to get ahead of himself. So with a stern warning, he gave Lin Tian a chance, 
He gave them three days to find iron ore and make iron tools. If they succeeded, Lin Tian's life would be spared. If not, he and Yue would face death. After that was cleared up, the goblins retreated to their tents, and Lin Tian could only clench his fist in frustration of how utterly foolish they are. And even the old priest was ruthlessly mad, willing to kill his own kind. But confronting him head-on with his current strength was out of the question. He needed to make some iron tools to buy time and grow stronger first. The next day had arrived, and night fell once more. But the search for iron ore continued, led by Lin Tian with a few goblins in front, while Yue trailing behind. She wasn't used to such strenuous activity, and soon found herself out of breath and exhausted. And so she pleaded for a few minutes of rest, and who could blame her they have been walking all day long after all. But this woman really forgot she is talking with goblins, and empathy and understanding doesn't come together with them. So instead of doing what she suggested, they responded by stomping on her until she couldn't stand. And they took pleasure in this cruel act, because to them, a girl goblin like her is nothing but a dead weight, which is not even beautiful enough for them. The standards of these guys are through the roof. Talk about the irony. But despite her begging, they continued their assault. Luckily, Lin Tan noticed the commotion and stepped in, but he was smart enough not to make this about protecting Yue, as this would only agitate the goblins. Instead, he just reminded them that he brought them along to help find iron ore, not to fight. He had already told them what iron ore looked like. If they wanted to stay alive, they needed to find at least one piece of ore in the valley ahead, otherwise they would all face death. And with the iron dagger in his hand, the goblins were quickly scared off, running to do as they were told, but not without hurling threats back at Lin Tian. They warned him to enjoy his time now, because when they found the iron ore, the boss wouldn't spare him, but Lin Tian was just so done with them. They are so stupid to even say this as their threats were just a way of informing him about their plans. But he don't even need it though as it were obvious from the start. He knew already that even if he made the iron tools, getting killed by these fools was just a matter of time. And it was clear that he needed to think about getting stronger. And the only option that allowed him to instantly achieve that was through the female goblin Yue. With her innate talent, if he mated with her, he could become the legendary goblin god. Thankfully Lintian's got that dog in him. Without hesitation, he put his plans into motion. She sees you a-crying, and so he comforts her. He spoke gently, telling her that as long as she stayed with him, he would protect her, and he promised her that he would give anything to her, like food to eat, a warm place to stay, and that no one would dare bully her again. And he assured her that he would keep his word, but he also made it clear that they were too weak right now to avoid being bullied. He needed her help to get stronger. And his words seemed to soothe and intrigued Yue, and so she asked how she could help. Lin Tian quickly revealed that if she was willing to have children with him, he could get stronger. This made her blush even more, as she had never tried such a thing before. And seeing the look on her face, Lin Tian knew he got this on the bag. So he leaned in for a kiss, making her head twirl. But the longer it went on, the more natural it felt for her. So she let all her guards down, lying on the floor all hot. And with feverish eyes, she told Lin Tian she was willing to get stronger and have his babies. And damn, my boy Lin Tian did not disappoint but we can't really get into details. Let's stay family friendly. The important thing was that both of them enjoyed their time together. And with this, Lin Tian ended up having a total of seven children with Goblin Yue, which increased his level cap. And due to the talent limit, he gained nine attack points, 100 health, and 10 defense. And he even got a title, the God's Blessing and Potential God. And his overall power was now at 65. And not only did his level increase, but his form also improved. This meant that he will get hotter the more he clapped cheeks. Talk about an OP skill. With this, his chances of winning against the goblin priest were much higher. But before attending to his other plans, he couldn't let his baby mama get cold under the moon. So he wrapped her up with his clothes, assuring her that he would protect her for life, which made her even more attached to him. And with their bond solidified, Lin Tian felt more determined than ever to take control of his destiny and lead his goblin clan to greatness. But their moment was abruptly interrupted by a scream for help. Turning to the source, they saw one of the goblins from their group running for his life, as his ass was pursued by a demon wolf. But what caught Lin Tian's attention even more was that these goblins had actually found iron ore. However, they had also brought back trouble, so he needed to eliminate the threat before celebrating. And so he grabbed his blade and asked Yue to stay and wait for him. And as soon as the wolf leaped to attack the goblin carrying the ore, Lin Tian stepped in and plunged his dagger into its neck. Even the goblin was in shock at how fast Lin Tian moved. But what was even more surprising was that with just one strike, the large wolf lay lifeless on the ground. With this, he realized Lin Tian's skills were formidable, possibly even greater than the chief himself. And so the goblin quickly handed over the ore when Lin Tian asked for it. 
and upon close inspection of the ore, Lin Tian couldn't help but smile. The quality was good. Therefore, he commanded the goblin to find more, promising to make weapons for him when they returned, and the goblin immediately set off to comply. The next day, smoke billowed from the woods as Lin Tian demonstrated his iron craft ability to the goblins. Their eyes widened with astonishment. They couldn't believe a goblin could actually forge such weapons. The iron blade he crafted could easily pierce the skull of a demon wolf, a beast they had struggled to kill before. Even the chieftain was dumbfounded by Lin Tian's skill. And with Lin Tian's newfound power and expertise, he quickly garnered respect and admiration from the goblin tribe. They saw in him as a great warrior who could bring them strength and security. And with excitement growing, the goblin who had been with Lin Tian during the iron ore hunt boasted about how Lin Tian had saved them from the demon wolf with the iron weapon. With this, the excitement contagiously grew, and Lin Tian seized the opportunity. Raising the weapon high, he asked the crowd if they wanted one too, and just as expected they all raised their hands in excitement. But not all reactions were the same. One goblin, smarter than the rest, had recognized what Lin Tian was doing, and so he made his presence known and reminded everyone of their agreement to spare Lin Tian. But if he would like to join their tribe, that showing off wasn't enough. If he truly wanted to stay with their group, he should make fifty such weapons in two days and this impossible task was his way of asserting dominance. But with the goblin's limited intelligence, this just backfired at him, as they began to think less of him, likening him to a human who just likes to command. And hearing their murmurs, the chieftain gritted his teeth in frustration. It was clear that Lin Tian was now more well-regarded than he was. Even the other goblins were willing to help Lin Tian with the challenge of making multiple weapons. With this, Lin Tian could only smirk in victory, knowing he was winning this battle of wits. His influence was growing and the path to becoming a goblin god seemed more attainable with each passing moment. A couple of days had passed, and it was night once more. Lin Tian had finally achieved the chieftain's challenge, and this put everyone in high spirits. The goblins cheered his name as loudly as they could. Meanwhile, the chieftain grinned from ear to ear, outwardly showing approval. But his eyes betrayed him, as it shows that he was seething with rage, but he didn't want to spoil the mood. So he joined in the excitement, leading a feast to celebrate Lin Tian's accomplishment. With this, cheers echoed through the forest. And as the feast continued, the boar had been cooked to perfection. Yui quickly approached Lin Tian with enthusiasm, excited to offer him the biggest piece of meat, specially reserved for him as the celebrant. And Lin Tian took the meat and began to eat. But almost immediately, veins popped out on his forehead as the poison seeped in. The once lively Lin Tian was now groveling on the floor, coughing and greatly weakened. And Yue was confused and worried, as she had no idea what was happening but her confusion was quickly answered as the chieftain appeared before them, standing tall and mighty. He laughed at how utterly stupid Lin Tian was for being fooled by the simplest of tricks. He mocked Lin Tian, saying that his ego and ambitions had hindered him, leading him to challenge the authority of the priest. But the chieftain wasn't content with just poisoning Lin Tian. He had noticed the bond between Lin Tian and Yue, and decided to make Lin Tian's last moments even more torturous. So he declared with malicious glee that he would kill Yue with Lin Tian's own knife making him watch her suffer. Instantly, blood splattered all around the field, but not from Yue, but from the chieftain, as his dirty hands were separated from his body by Lin Tian, and this caught the chieftain off guard, leaving him in shock and questioning. How could Lin Tian have recovered from the poison? And seeing his stupid face just made Lin Tian smirk, and so Lin Tian answered him as a reward for amusing him, and that all of what he saw was an act, and he was just too stupid enough to believe that. And this was possible thanks to Lin Tian's system. He already knew the priest would try to poison him, but he wouldn't reveal that last part. And with the tables turned, the priest used his last resort, ripping off his chains for a surprise attack from above. But Lin Tian had already read him like a book, as he weaved out of the way flawlessly and positioned himself to deliver a nasty backshot, separating the chieftain's head clean from his body. And with the threat out of the way, only the other goblins remained. And as he approached, the only thing they could do is cower in fear, as they knew too well that they were outmatched. But thankfully, Lin Tian wasn't there to kill goblins, he was there to make an army out of them. And so, he declared to everyone what he wanted, and that from now on, he was their boss, and he would lead them to attack the humans, and even the elves, as he was here to make their dreams come true. And under his leadership they're going to work hard, but they were going to mate harder, and they would never leave any cheek unchecked, because to them there is never enough meat to eat. And with his speech, the goblins roared with excitement, convinced that with Lin Tian's knowledge and skill, their dream wasn't far from reality, and therefore, they cheered his name again but now addressing him as their boss. And Lin Tian knew these goblins too well. To further cement their loyalty, he offered them the chieftain's corpse to eat, 
and with the nutritious amount of mana the previous chieftain possessed, they didn't hesitate to devour him, and the sight made Lintian smile, as conquering the goblin tribe was just the beginning of his revenge. Next, he would use the elves to cultivate a stronger generation of his tribe. Meanwhile, hidden in the bushes, an elf watched with a worried expression, as she couldn't wrap her head around what was happening in front of her eyes. This was beyond ordinary goblin behavior. Some great evil was definitely about to rise. A few days had passed. The elf hurriedly returned to her village, making a beeline for the clan leader's residence. Upon arriving at the doorstep, she was greeted with a respectful welcome from another elf, acknowledging her status as a princess. But Kasana wasn't in the mood for formalities, as she had urgent news to deliver to the clan mother. But bursting through the door wasn't a bright idea, and so Kasana just received a flashbang of a scene, completely catching her off guard. Her mother really knew how to enjoy herself, as she was surrounded by several loyal servants who pampered her with food while making sure she was pleased, and the atmosphere was one of leisurely indulgence, completely at odds with Kasana's frantic urgency. And it wasn't a surprise that Kasana was deeply embarrassed and was about to retreat. But the clan mother, who was ever perceptive, sensed the importance of her daughter's visit. She quickly stopped her, knowing that if Kasana had come in such a hurry, the matter must be urgent. With this opportunity, though embarrassed, Kasana composed herself to report on the goblin tribe in the forest. But her mother looked at her as if she were joking, still completely underestimating the goblins, because to her, they were just weak, dirty, low-level monsters that didn't deserve any recognition, which Kasana agreed. But what she had discovered in the forest convinced her that something demonic was definitely brewing within the goblin tribe. Just that morning, she had found a black-haired giant bear that had been chewed up in the demonized forest. The scene was littered with signs of fighting and hunting, and the surrounding area was covered with goblin footprints. Logically speaking, it was impossible for goblins to kill a monster of this level. And a few days ago, she saw the old leader of the goblin tribe being killed by a younger goblin. This strange behavior suggested something significant was happening among the goblins. And this last piece of information caught the clan mother's attention. Such an unprecedented event in such a short time could only mean that the goblin population in the forest had nearly recovered. With this, she allowed Kasana to take a few people to clean up the goblins, but reminded her not to kill them all at once. They needed to leave a few alive, as the medicine made from raw goblin hearts was the best tonic for the male elves in the tribe. The needs of the clan mother were just too deep if you know what I mean. And Kasana couldn't help but blush with embarrassment at her mother's bluntness. To make matters worse, her mother suggested that, since Kasana had been working so hard, she should reward herself with a male elf to accompany her tonight. This immediately prompted Kasana to leave, as she was definitely not about that life. Meanwhile, back at the goblin camp, things were getting serious. Several twigs were scattered across the land, representing the goblin's next big move. Each branch symbolized an elf treehouse in the Vientane forest. A total of 30 beautiful homes, as reported by the goblin who had surveyed the area. And Lintian appreciated the detailed report. To reward the scout's effort, he promised to give him two elves from the tribe once they defeated them. This not only made the scout happy, but also excited the others, showing that their leader could be generous to the competent. It boosted their determination to outperform. With this motivation, Lintian easily commanded the rowdy goblins to do his bidding, allowing him to focus on strategy. According to the report, there were an average of two elves in each wooden house, meaning there were roughly 60 elves in total. Including the dozen or so at the mine site, there were more than 70 elves. With such numbers, it was wise to have strengthened the goblins' overall capabilities. A few days earlier, following the priest's death, Lintian led the goblins to mine for weapons and hunt monsters to increase their levels, and his demonstration of skill in killing the priest had made it easy to convince the goblins to follow his lead. And while they were at it, the goblins gained some formidable skills from the monsters they had defeated. They picked up a giant tusk attack from a demonic boar, stone-like skin from a golem, quiet steps from a three-tailed fox, and climbing abilities from a sharp-clawed monkey. And lastly, they even managed to take down a giant two-headed snake, which required all their manpower but was worth it for the secret venom skill they acquired. And stealing skills was possible due to the goblins' innate talent called gene devouring. This overpowered ability was only hindered by their intelligence. But now, under the command of a smarter being, it revealed its true potential. As a result, the overall power of the goblins had greatly improved, surpassing even their former leader the priest, with an average strength of 250. And considering the combined combat power of each elf was just around 200, the goblins had clearly surpassed them. This realization put a wide grin on Lintian's face. And with the simulation's cooldown resetting, it was the perfect opportunity for him to use it again. After all, they were planning a sneak attack on the elves' territory, 
so caution was paramount. And thus, the simulation began, and his current plot was set for the night before the raid. Under his strong leadership, the strengthened goblin army set off for the elf village, fully confident in the success of their sneak attack. However, they were ambushed by the elves, who had anticipated their move, leading the goblin army into a trap where they were shot dead. After being caught by the elf clan mother, the goblins were hanged in the village forest as a grim warning to any ambitious goblins who dared step out of line. In summary, the plan they thought was perfect was actually within the control of others, leaving Lintian with zero rewards. And this was completely unexpected. But as the summary had stated, the goblins were running right into the palm of their enemies, and there was only one possibility for this outcome. And that is the tribe was being monitored by the elves. With this realization, Lintian quickly used the goblins' natural talent, and that is their well-developed senses of hearing and smell. Concentrating hard, he knew they should be able to find clues about where their enemies might be hiding. And just as he expected, his ears picked up something beyond the bushes ahead. But attacking now would be foolish without knowing how many enemies they were dealing with, as letting even one escape could jeopardize the plan. Keeping this in mind, Lintian continued to act unaware, but as soon as he noticed the elves leaving, he and his men discreetly pursued them. After counting their numbers and noticing they had let their guard down, as they panically sprinted back to their village to report, Lintian and his goblins went to action. Arrows flew in their blind spot, hitting every elves present, and one even managed to hit the princess square in her gluteus maximus, bringing her to a crashing halt. And the next thing she knew, her subordinates were sprawled across the ground, unconscious or dead, while she remained the only one still awake. And it didn't help that she could hear the goblins' voices closing in, complimenting their boss on his accurate archery. And Kasana knew this would be the end if she was caught now, so she tried to move. But to her dismay, her body wouldn't cooperate. She was poisoned and escape was futile, leaving her no choice but to await her fate. And the sight of the goblins made her situation seem even grimmer. As it seemed the goblin chief had been expecting her all along based on what he says to her. And the indifference on his face didn't help, as it only sealed her fate. Despite being intelligent than the rest that he even outsmarted an elf like her, there was no compassion or mercy in his eyes. To him, she and her comrades were nothing but a clump of meat. With that chilling realization, Kasana braced herself for whatever was coming next. Hey, all jokes aside, if you like this commentary, like and subscribe for more. Peace.